So we've announced probably seven or eight major things at the show, at this NAB. The first one, probably the most significant, outside of actual new product, is the new sensor. So the Dragon sensor, which we talked about last year, a year ago, is now real, working, in prototype form, not in a, not in a camera yet, in, in our world, in lab cameras, but not in a current shipping product. 6K resolution, so a 6,000 line sensor. Um, we don't have the final definition on the full raster yet, but that'll come when we're ready. It's okay. close to coming. I may actually have it announced by the end of the show. They're actually discussing it every day in engineering what the actual okay. final raster will be. Um, but if you, if you know the RED dynamic and where we've traveled from the original RED sensor, the M sensor, to the MX, from 4K to 5K for the Epic MX that also goes in the Scarlet, to now the 6K MX, this is the same sort of exponential leap that we did from M to MX because we're going on the 6K sensor from between 12 to 13 stops to 15 stops. And if you understand the photographic medium and what that means, it's funny how the numbers start to become less and less important and actually much bigger gaps in terms of how much has changed because the movement from 4K to 5K is 60% more resolution, which is a huge difference. The movement from 5K to 6K is that level, and the movement from 13 stops to 15 stops is monstrous in terms of what you can do with the picture point. Um, so that's kind of where things sit right now. That's the sensor. 6K, 15 stops. 15 stops, without HDR. And then you apply HDR, you get another four or five stops. So native, out of the box sensor, 15 stops. Um, go under the light so oh, yeah, the yeah. videographers could have a better chance. How about that? Is that, too, is that still too backlit? So figure everything I'm going to talk about, all the new announcements that I'm going to talk about, the target for everything is by the end of this calendar year. That's the goal, right? Everything with RED is engineering goal related. So the goal is within a six or seven month period, everything that we're talking about should be coming to market. That's the plan. The other thing that's really interesting on the sensor front is that this is an upgrade for this camera, right? For the Epic and also the Scarlet. We haven't figured out the price point for the Scarlet yet, but for the Epic, we're talking $6,000 upgrade to go from 5K to 6K. So it's that same pricing logic that we did when we went from M to MX, right? So we're always in this logic point of giving as much value back to our customers, which I would very candidly say we don't actually have customers, we have thousands of partners in our venture, right? That are all locked into what we're doing, paying attention to what we're doing, and sort of the embodiment of these products are the users, right? That are out in the world. So, in terms of traditional marketing, you know, we don't do that. But what we do do is give a huge amount of value back to the people that have bought into Red Ones, bought into Epics, and bought into Scarlets. So, this is the next step in that piece of the puzzle. Six grand for a 6K sensor that moves into this kit. Um, that's, I think that's kind of good on the sensor. Alright, so the next big thing is the new projector, it's called Red Ray Laser Projector. So this is a new product that we've been talking about for a little over a year, now it's real, and we're driving the projector, running it off Red Ray, so Red Ray is our 4K playback product, right? So we're, you're going to see Red Ray in action, you're going to see the projector in action. Um, and what you're going to see is really interesting because you've all seen 3D, right? And there's something that happens when you watch 3D where after a while you get eye strain. It's uncomfortable. It's hard to watch, right? Part of that reason technically is because what's happening with the, the images are interleaved, right? You're looking at two eyes flashing back and forth and they're interpolated as a signal and then fed to your brain. What we're doing is something fundamentally different with our project. On top of the fact that it's laser light, so it's very low cost, very high efficiency. Um, and you don't replace the bulbs per se because there is no traditional bulb, it's laser light. What we're doing is we're feeding two eyes 3D simultaneously. So you would use passive glasses, not active glasses. And it is the most comfortable, highest quality viewing environment for 3D you'll ever see. Because what we're doing is we're sending the signal independently to both eyes. And we can do it at up to 120 frames a second. So this is not just a projector for today and tomorrow, this is a projector for into the future. It's like everything that Red does, right? Passive glasses. Passive, passive glasses. Passive, passive. passive so real glasses. D? Real D style. Okay. Cost is a really interesting dynamic of this. So the cost target, it's actually a scalable product. So it starts out in a home user consumer environment 
for a 4K laser projector that does 2D and 3D for around $10,000 target price point. That will target to about a 15 foot screen. So for home use, high-end home use, DI theater use, all of that stuff, you're talking about a, a $10,000 package. Then we scale all the way up to full-on exhibition off the same projector technology and the laser light engines change. So we don't have price points set for how far it'll go. But you will absolutely use the same projector technology to drive a 10 to 15 foot screen as you will to drive a 50 to 70 foot screen. It's just the amount of laser light that you pump into this system. So that's the laser projection. Again, targeted for some time this year. Driving it is the Red Ray player, which we don't have a target price point set for. But there'll be a number of variants of it. There's a pro version and a, and a consumer version, just like the projector system. And we're running 4K, visually lossless, you know, the, the experience is full on, theatrical quality, at bit rates lower than Blu-ray HD. That's the target. Working now, all running in the booth. So that covers projector and red. Availability from the It's all targeted into the year. I would say just keep all this stuff in a six month window. Um, Number three. Now let's hone in a little bit on, on some of the other sort of interesting things that we're doing, right? So you know we have the Canon mount that's out, and people have been using Canon and PL mount. We have a Nikon mount now, it's also a smart mount. Very, very inexpensive, $700 for the aluminum, and I think $2,200 for the titanium. So people that use Nikon lenses, we also have a Leica mount coming, a Leica M mount for that glass. So we're starting to expand that universe of the different kind of lenses people want to use for cinema, stills. And if you think about what these cameras are, right, you get the question all the time, well, is that a movie camera or a still camera? Well, the answer is yes, it's both. It is very, very capable and natural and at home in both worlds, right? So it shoots all the biggest movies in the world and all these big TV shows and music videos and commercials and everything. And now it's also being adopted in droves by still photographers that love the form factor and love the ability to get motion and still from the same device. So that's all happening now. It's all real life happening. Some of the interesting things, can I stand up? Is that okay? So one of the things that we're working on is called the Meisler module. So it's nicknamed after Steve Meisler because it was partially his brainchild to kind of position and work a concept that would take away the, what we call the world of spaghetti, right? So in a typical cinema configuration, when you're running a bunch of wireless focus and, and all kinds of different options on the camera, you get all kinds of cabling and all kinds of jerry-rigged activity going on. And it's troublesome, right? So he was saying, we should have a better mousetrap. If Red can design everything else so small and compact, why can't we design an integrated system to make this work better, this whole rigging system. So that's what this is. So it's this little piece that you see right here, this little box right here, attached to the back of the camera. It integrates wireless video, wireless audio, and full-on fizz control. So for those that aren't in the cinema world, fizz is the focus iris zoom control, right? So we have these uh, motors that are driving it. It all configs and runs right into here, so it just attaches to the camera. So there's basically only one cable now, not 300 cables. And if you see, and I'll talk about this in a minute, the big display, get a better uh, so if you see now I have full control wirelessly and this is there's a, a partnership with our friends at Element Reality Element uh, Technica that um, work with us on the wireless controller side and some of the integration of this right so it's their controller their wireless controller and if we had a zoom lens we could also control the zoom range so there's these sliders for all that kind of stuff but this starts to make this more simple cost for this module is, I think, targeted at $13,000, um, which if you understand that world and what that stuff actually costs pre-read, this is also a breakthrough from a cost uh, performance. Thing. So you got that going. Now, there's another version of this that's much more simple in this camera over here. I'll show it to you in a second. We'll go over there in a minute. That just does the wireless video. This has it all integrated. But there's another version that won't be, uh, as, won't cost as much as this. That will just do the wireless video. The other new thing that's coming is this. So this is a nine-inch display. So the display is actually bigger than the camera, which is pretty interesting, right? It's also a touchscreen display. So I control it touchscreen, right? I have all my options there. And the idea of this is, it's very lightweight. It's very thin, right? And once you start to get used to a tool like this, you never even want to go back to a smaller display because I can really see critical focus, right? 
So it's the same technology, the same um, usability as a smaller monitor, just a bigger canvas to look at. And of course, it doesn't always have to be mounted on the camera. You can mount it low or back or whatever. Uh, so this is a coming soon. Uh, there is a price point for it. I don't exactly remember. I think it's in the. Um, it's above three thousand dollars with an OLED uh, display in there now. So this is again another very large improvement. The original eyepiece is still the best eyepiece on the market for any digital camera. It is so good that you think, well, why do you even need a better one? Well, trust me, when you see this compared to the old one, then you want this one. Because this is a whole another leap forward, a much better display device. Blacks are deeper. Um, it's, just, it's just a better piece of technology. So we're also doing the same kind of logic on the upgrade path. So if you want this, you don't have to buy a new one if you already own one. You can upgrade this for, I think it's $1,200. The new one, I believe, is 3900 $3, I think, is the price point. On this one, I have the Pro.io module, right? So this gives us um, high-end audio, digital audio, four channels of AES audio. It gives us multiple um, HDSDI ports. There's the AES port to take out AES. And on the top here, you can see, so we have another monitor port, smart monitor port, right? So we can view two LCDs or an EVF and an LCD, whatever you want. 